isn't necessarily something that's very creative. This area is on the north side of our property and it provides support for many of the animal areas that are inside the park. Not just rescue and rehabilitation, but uh, any of the, the care that goes on with our animals. Uh, this, for example, right here, this trailer, that is a portable aquarium. So if we're transporting fish from our facility or getting fish from another facility, they are able to transport them on that right there. The filtration, oxygen, everything that those fish need is right there on that trailer. We have our aquarium quarantine facilities to your right. That's the covered area and the building that's behind it. Any fish that are coming to our park before they go into one of the aquariums in park, they stay in quarantine anywhere from 30 to 90 days just to make sure they're free of any uh, parasites or diseases that can be transmitted to our healthy fish that are in the exhibit. So keep coming on this way. There's some other animal transport containers here. The silver box would be used for transporting things like a walrus, seal, or sea lion. The blue box would be used for cetaceans. Those would be whales. So maybe a, a killer whale, beluga whale, something uh, large like that. There would be a wall there to fully enclose it and the animal sitting in water to help keep its temperature maintained. Keep on coming this way. There's a the van right back here, so we'll watch out for that moving. And just watch right behind you here. If you've seen the Sea Rescue Show, you might recognize these two vehicles. These are used for manatee rescues. The boat here named Dundee. Uh, named after a manatee that was rehabilitated by our park uh, is what they used to get the manatees. Uh, the back here can be removed. It's gone right now, so they're able to easily pull the manatee into the back of the boat. And then once it gets to shore, they move it into the truck there. The padding in the bottom keeps the manatee comfortable, and they're able to do some immediate first aid uh, on the way to our park. And it's not just one or two people going, it's a team of people to assist in these rescues. <laughs> now keep coming on this way. Do any of you all know what animals our park rescues besides manatees? Sea turtles. Birds. And what'd you say? Dolphins. Dolphins or whales, uh, for several decades our park has been rescuing birds, sea turtles, and manatees. Just a few years ago, we started being able to do rehabilitation for cetaceans. Those would be the whales or the dolphins. We have uh, several pilot whales that are on site that were rescued a few summers ago during mass strandings and I believe later on this morning you'll be talking with the trainers at the stadium that are caring for those pilot whales. Uh, come on over here real quick. Just make sure you don't put your hands in the water. In these four pools here are some sea turtles that are receiving rehabilitation. Out in the park, turtle track is a perfect place to be able to see some additional sea turtles that are in rehabilitation. Uh, in this back area, we also have sea turtles in rehab in that aquarium quarantine building. Initially, when those turtles come in, they'll probably be in the aquarium quarantine building. Uh, for, re for their more long-term care, they could come over here or out to the turtle track exhibit. Some of these are our permanent residents that need more specialized care, like the two turtles here, Cobbler and Little Hercules, they're loggerhead turtles. They are blind. So they will be with us for the rest of their lives. They're, they're not a good candidate for release. And 
uh, because of that uh, sight impairment, they would not do as well feeding or getting around in our turtle track exhibit. I'm not sure who's who. <laughs> I refer to them collectively as Cobbler and Little Hercules. I, I don't know who's who. A pokey's over here. This is a Pimp's Ridley sea turtle, it looks like. She's getting a little massage from the water coming down there in the pool. Uh, Pimp's Ridley sea turtles are one of the least abundant sea turtle species you'll find in the world. This particular one has a condition similar to arthritis. I saw some of you noticed our sea turtle rescue stats for this year. So far in the short amount of time of this year, we already have two turtle rescues and one release. The release was one that would have been rescued sometime last year. On average, you may rescue anywhere from 60 to 90 sea turtles in a year. Back in 2010, though, our park did rescue more than 500 sea turtles because of cold weather in January, and then the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico later that summer. It's really, really of the cold weather, if, if it's a cold weather uh, winter, uh, they become almost comatose, they're cold stunned. Uh, the rest of the year we can have entanglement in fishing line, ingestion of non-food items, they'll get struck by boats and then other various things. Our, our staff never exactly know what they're going to uh, deal with when they go out for a rescue, because no two are going to be exactly the same. You go ahead and come on up this way. There are a few manatees in the pools here. This particular pool is a medical pool, a false bottom pool. That's what the white bottom is. It raises up. So if they needed to tube feed a manatee that wasn't eating on its own, or if they needed to do some actual treatment to an injury, uh, raising the animal up to the surface is a very easy way to be able to uh, take care of those medical needs. Uh, in the last month or so, a few months, we have brought in several manatees due to cold stress, the newest manatee in this pool here. Uh, these two are both cold stress rescues, uh, another cold stress in the larger pool, as well as two that were struck by boats. Cold stress tends to be the, the winter uh, cause for the rescues, and then year-round boat strikes entanglement in fishing line, ingestion of things that aren't food. And sometimes manatees will also become disoriented and end up in an area where there's not a lot of food, so they will be malnourished. Uh, we also will rescue orphans. That's one of the cutest things uh, our park does. Uh, in the back pool, that white pool that's covered, there's not one, not two, not three, but four orphan manatees uh, that have been rescued in the last several months. An orphan is a baby manatee that got separated from its mom. It doesn't have a food source because it would have been nursing from its mom. So our staff bottle feed them several times a day. Yes, they have their, their work cut out for them. Eventually they'll wean them onto the plant diet that our park feeds, which consists of different types of lettuce. And our goal, whether it's a sea turtle, manatee, bird, or one of the, the whales or dolphins, the goal is to get them rehabilitated and then released back into their natural habitat. How long would you have to keep a baby manatee before it can go back into the wild? Uh, for the return of any of the animals, it's always very situational. Pass by the orphans, you just can't go up to the pool. If you do want to take a step up on this first step, please no flash photos though. And these are those four orphans. They just named one of them. There's Leonard, 
Wiggy, Shirley. Not Shirley. Carmine. Aww. And Laverne. So Laverne, Squiggy, Carmine, Leonard. And our animal care staff will vote on those names. And uh, the, the winner gets the name. So once you've taken a couple photos, come on around this way over towards Emily here and we'll let the others get a look. There are some of the stretchers that they use for transporting animals or picking animals up, I should say. Those are then could then be placed in one of those transport boxes, like we saw the big blue block box when we first came in. And that type of box would be used for transporting that big one, something like a, a larger whale. But if they were transporting a bottlenose dolphin, it would be like that, but much smaller. And I mentioned in 2010 the number of sea turtle rescues that we had. If you were happen to be back here back then, it was incredible. Uh, all around this large pool. This large pool kind of became part of the filtration system. But the turtles that we brought in uh, weren't adult size, they were juveniles. And they set up these blue tubs all around here. So I think it was like three deep on this side, two deep all the way around. And all of their pipes kind of filtered into this pool to pass through the filtration system. It was incredible. I, considering the number of turtles our staff normally deal with in a year, they had triple that in the month of January alone. We're going to pass by this case here, and uh, there is a satellite tracker here. The belt would go around the base of the tail, and then it kind of bobs along. It, it, if it were to get tangled in something, it's designed to break off. And super right here, I'll point this out to you. A crab trap. Uh, this came in tangled around the manatee years and years ago. And if you all are familiar with the story of winter, a dolphin tail movie that came out a couple years ago was based on her actual rescue. Um, she was tangled up in something similar. And although winter didn't come here to the SeaWorld, quick things about the park in general. Emily mentioned the behind the scenes tour. Uh, the official SeaWorld behind the scenes tour is a 90 minute tour. Part of it does come back here to the North Support area. Our guests then travel behind the scenes at the shark encounter. They learn about how we care for our sharks and or about some myths and misconceptions about the sharks. Uh, they'll touch a shark over at the shark encounter, and then they'll travel to the back of Wild Arctic and see one of the behind the scenes polar bear dens. And then they also meet a Magellanic penguin on the tour. You can get to touch that animal. We do have a few other tour products as well, like the dolphin, a close tour where the guests learn about the care of the dolphins and how we go about training them and participate in a training session. There's the sea lion up close tour. They learn about how we train our sea lions and meet one of the stars from the sea lion show. 